Within this video, we're going to walk through how you can actually animate objects to go round and round in circles, like a solar system here inside of Twinmotion. So to start this, we're going to need an actual model. Now, you can use this model. That's what this model is actually for. And the link is in the description. So just scroll down here a little ways. And what you're looking for is this download 3D model button right over here. Go and just click on that. And it's going to say, OK, what kind of format do you want to download? Go ahead and just choose this top one right here. Uh, we're looking for the FBX in this case. So we'll go ahead and just say download. And it's going to say, where do you want to download this? And I'm just going to go ahead and just download it into my downloads folder. So we'll go ahead and just say save. Once it's actually been downloaded, just go ahead and unzip it. So I can just right click on this. I'm going to choose extract all and just say extract. And you'll get this new folder. So all you gotta do is just double click on this. Inside of there, you'll have a source folder. Inside of the source folder, this is the said model that we need. So now let's jump over to Twinmotion. With Twinmotion up and running, let's go ahead and just choose our import button right down here in the bottom left. And it's gonna say, what do you wanna bring in? Make sure that you do have this selected geometry. We're not gonna be using these other three types. I'm gonna go ahead and say open, and then just navigate to said file. Go ahead and open up that source folder and open it up, say open. So here's the important part for those that are taking notes. In a previous video, we had actually changed the way that this collapse was happening. In this case, we want to keep hierarchy. So just click on this little section and say keep hierarchy. That will allow us to actually animate these things as they're moving around. Without the hierarchy, we're not gonna be able to do that. I've gone ahead and turned off the UV and I've set my Z axis to up and the unit conversion to auto. So I can go ahead and just grab that one, say import. And we say, okay, well, where did it go? Well, if you look straight down, you will actually find this. So there it is, it's right below me. I'm just going to select part of it, press the F key to frame in on it. And then I'm just going to kind of navigate down to a decent spot so that we can start to actually animate this. And to actually understand how this animation is happening, we're going to open up a couple little side panels. First one is going to be this one over here on the right. You'll find this little arrow over here and just click on that. And inside of here, you'll see that we have our solar system. Now, if this isn't opened up, you can just click on this little button right here to open that up. And you can see that we've got our base, our bridge, and then all of the planets. We've got our Oort cloud in here. So we've got all the pieces that we need to actually animate. In this case, we're just going to do a really simple animation. And I'm just going to animate Jupiter going around in a circle. So how do we actually animate this? Well, we need the actual animator piece. So let's grab that. So over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see another little open up area right here, this little arrow. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And what I'm looking for are these rotators, but where are these rotators at? So I'm just gonna go all the way back up to the top. And from the library, we're just gonna scroll to the very bottom and you'll find tools down here at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and open up that one. And inside of tools, we will find our animators. So we'll go ahead and open up that one. And inside of that one, hey, down we go. We'll find our actual rotators. So let's go ahead and just open up that one. And here is said rotator. So I'm just going to click and drag this into the world. And where the object is going to be rotating from is this spot. So we're going to get a circle that kind of comes around here. Now, this model is set up so that it will be very easy for us to actually make Jupiter or any of these planets actually rotate. And that is because their pivot point, so if I select one of these, you'll see is directly underneath the center of the solar system. So this is important because this is something that you may need to actually set up. So let's go ahead and close this here on the side and let's actually get this rotator working. Now, if we close this over here inside of our scene graph, you'll see we actually have that rotator. So I wanna put that rotator in a location that is going to be advantageous to make this planet go around the sun. So it needs to be set at the pivot point at zero, 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 because this is set up in the world at zero, zero, zero. So to make that happen, I'm gonna select my rotator and down here below, there's a, another little area that we're gonna open up. I'm just open this up and we have our transform section. If this does not say transform, that's fine. Just click right here. And all we need to do is actually select transform right here. And we can see that our position is not at zero, zero, zero. So we wanna go ahead and select that, type in zero, and we'll select this one, type in zero, and I'll select that one, type in zero, then hit enter. So now it's in the same location as the bottom of our sun here. So next up, what we wanna do to get Jupiter rotate, all we need to do is open this up, find Jupiter. So right about here, there we go. And I'm just gonna click and drag this onto the rotator and instantly it starts to move. Now, this may not be what you're looking for. You don't want this ping pong animation. So let's look at the actual options of the rotator. So select your rotator. And down here at the bottom, we can turn this play on or off. Now, if I just turn this off, you'll notice it keeps moving until it goes back to its origin. And that's totally fine. Let's go ahead and turn this on so we can see what's going on. So our angle here, uh, I don't want it to go 90 degrees. I want it to go 360. So I'm just going to take this and crank it all the way to the top. Uh, you can also type in a value right here if you need to. Now, you'll notice it's ping-ponging back and forth. And that is this section right here. So we'll change this from ping-pong. I'm going to go ahead and say loop. 
And this way, it will just keep going around and around and around. We also have our speed over here, so we can slow this down. So if I want to we just go a little bit slower, like of course Jupiter needs to go slower than like Mercury, right? So you can actually set your speeds here. Next, we also have our triggers. Now the trigger, we're not gonna worry about it in this case, but essentially what you can do is have something rotate when you get close to it, which becomes really, really helpful, right? So that's very nice. So with some of the basic stuff now out of the way, let's talk about some of the more advanced features. Now, what's kind of cool is that, let's go ahead and close this down here. Uh, with the rotator selected, you've actually got a link, an unlink, and a pivot movement over here. So if I choose this unlink, and I get this new little cursor, and I can just click on that, and hey, it's unlinked. And you can actually see that unlinked over here as well. So if I want to link that back up, click on there. Hey, I can add Jupiter in there. Awesome. And if I want to grab in Saturn, yay, they're both in there, right? And they're both moving at the same speed. So this brings up a very interesting point, is if I want these to move at different speeds... I need to have another rotator, okay? So keep that in mind. So let's go and unlink Saturn. I don't need that one real quick. So now what we can look at also is this angle. So if I open this up, you'll notice there's a little more down here below. There's a couple of them. Um, and you can actually change the axis. So if I wanted this to actually go up and around, or if I wanted to rotate uh, just along the axis, you can see it's kind of going in and out. It looks like a lollipop going up and down, right? If I can do it under X, I can make it fly around this way too. So I don't know, maybe you want some kind of satellites going around too, right? So you can do those as well. Uh, let's go back over here. Um, under our animations, um, I did show that we have our ping pong. We also have a once. So if you want to just go around once, that's fine. Uh, more, we can actually say, oh, we want it to delay for just a moment before it actually starts up, uh, which comes into play when you're playing with things like triggers, which is helpful. Uh, in the more down here under the triggers, we also have a trigger type, right? So if we actually turn this on, we can open this up. So let's turn that on, go back. So we have a multi. So do we want the camera to actually trigger these pedestrians, vehicles, um, or actors? We can make that. Um, and then our trigger zone. So how close does something have to get to it before it'll actually trigger and start to animate? So it's important little pieces that go along with that. So I'm going to leave that there. So there you go. There's a quick and easy way to actually animate things like pieces of a solar system to go round and round and round inside of twin motion. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, confusion that you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below.